So it's Lord Jones, uh, come on, beer is the normal charismatic self. All right. Oh, wait, I need more beer first. Well, you just got more beer. I drank it so quickly, I got anxious. <laughs> Because <laughs> remember, I just had a big old mighty spill. Yeah, are you sure you drank it? Is it on the floor somewhere? I might just rinse out a few towels, but I mean, you know, <laughs> filter. Right? Go right back in the glass. Right back in the glass. Hi, I'm Ryan Kite, and my co host, Mike Siago, and we are Ale Ventures. Hello. Today we're trying something new. We're calling it a clever wordplay interbrew. It's a portman brew. It's a portman brew. Oh, he had <laughs> it in the pocket. He's groaning already. He didn't have it his lunch today. Who knows? And what we're doing today with this new series is we are interviewing our friends in the beer industry that are also gamers. With us today is James. James, tell us a little bit about the Flying Barrel. Hello, my name is James. I own the Flying Barrel. It's the local homebrew shop here in town. I sell ingredients and equipment and teach classes for everyone that makes their own beer, wine, cider, mead. If it has alcohol and it's naturally fermented, we're going to be there to support you. Um, we get lots of people into the hobby through our classes. We uh, have a full retail store and trying to keep every last little ingredient that you could possibly want to put in there. It's a, it's a great place that combines a lot of nerdiness that is the hobby uh, of, as well as a lot of enthusiasm for different flavors and uh, love of beer. And uh, I also happen to be a gamer, so I'm excited here to sit down and chat about games as well. Anybody can talk about beer, but we also want to talk about games. Right. So one thing that brought Mike and I together was our fondness for table topping, and then we found out that we also like old school video games as well. Uh, one of the things that I know through you, James, like for hanging out for a while, is that you used to have a bit of a history for gaming. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that? A bit, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm that magical age. I'm 33, uh, and I I grew up with gaming. Like I remember when my dad had Windows 3.1 installed on his computer, and I would exit out of Windows to go into MS DOS and then boot up like the original Lemmings disc or uh, Treasure Mountain or some of these really old games that I, I used to love so much. And I, over the years, things changed. And then in my high school and college years, I went fully down that rabbit hole and went really hardcore into some competitive gaming and what they, the new kids call eSports. Uh, I'm not so into that, but um, I saw at the end of that rabbit hole, it was a lot of fun, it was a lot of joy, a lot of grief, a uh, whole mixed bag, and now I have a different angle on gaming, which is largely co-op, community building, couch co-op gaming, and I, I have a blast. These guys are really into tabletop gaming, which is a world I seek to explore. I don't know a whole lot about that. Oh, we'll get, we can get uh, you into that. We don't have a magic carpet, yeah. but don't worry. I'm all about you should try gaming, all of so. these. <laughs> Seem like a... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Drop, drop the crane. <laughs> <laughs> so, it seemed like a natural fit to uh, sit here and chat about that. Yeah, what you really miss out with if you're not doing the tabletop gaming is an extreme opportunity to spend all of your money on Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> no, look, just because it's plastic and cardboard and everything else doesn't mean it can't cost you a couple hundred oh, dollars. Yeah. Am I right, Mike? Hey, little, paper pound. Little thing uh, called a uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> little, little, little addiction you got over there, buddy? Anyway, like and subscribe so <laughs> I can uh, fuel my habit. <laughs> Every thumbs up is another meeple that goes to Mike's uh, little cave. <laughs> the more funds he gets, the more content you get. Yes! Yes! <laughs> so let, let's take it back in time. Like we said, we like retro gaming. You said you did competitive gaming at one point. I'm going to start naming games back in the time. Uh, Can you tell me when I've gone back too far? Call of Duty 2. Never net FPSs. Never so, enough yeses. No. All right, I already failed. <laughs> yeah, so no, I really wasn't in competitive gaming at large. Oh, it was okay. just one game that's a monstrosity that took over everything. And uh, does this game have a name, or is it like uh, kind of like an ex lover? You kind of just put it in a box and kick it off the cliff? Uh, mostly putting it in a box and kicking it off the cliff, but I'll be happy to talk about it now. <laughs> all right. Uh, that game is World of Warcraft. It's the game, the be all end all of It's the best game I've played, it's the worst game I've played. Um, it, it's a hell of a game. You might not I, be able to see from our crappy camera quality, but uh, his hives are coming back right now. Oh, yeah. So he's got a little itchy here. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Just 30 yeah. minutes on mine, honey. Give me the next one. No, honey, it wasn't a thing back in those days. <laughs> but, no, it's great. I don't, I don't regret it. It was a fun time in my life. It was a good chapter, and I'm glad it's over. <laughs> you said uh, earlier, I want to touch on something, because I think there's a big tie-in. Um, there are, there's nerdum and geekdom everywhere. Absolutely. You're literally in a house built upon people geeking out and nerding out about uh, brewing beer. And yes. it brings people together. Or, and wine as well, kombucha, whatever it may be. But it's the fact that 
uh, people have a hobbyist, sometimes a career mentality about uh, coming together and geeking out over making their own, right? That's one of the things that we do over here where, just to my right, we really can't do it because of the camera, but there's six kettles where you can come with your imagination and geek out and work with you and the other brewers that are here to uh, uh, make these creations and bring them to life. And like with gaming, a lot of people like to explore the uh, geekdom and dot directly into them and just go full bore into them. You did that kind of with World of Warcraft where uh, you weren't just a player, right? Yeah, I started off as a player and then I quickly grew up the ranks of my guild as the, the society of people that I was playing with until I was the, the guild master, the, the head guy of a fairly competitive rating that's guild. That's man. Um, and that's a pretty elite position. Um, I did that for a couple of years and then I just totally burnt out and had to leave. <laughs> but you know, it, it's cool. It, it's a rabbit hole, just like many hobbies have rabbit holes and I feel like I got to see the end of that and I enjoyed that time and I got out and I, I think I did that without too much damage. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think you're doing pretty good for yourself. You <laughs> Thank know? you. Uh, but then uh, one of the things that I really enjoy, uh, I was always a uh, 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 play outside kind of kid, but Saturdays were always special. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> There's nerds of all type. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, Saturday mornings were special where my brother uh, Spencer and I were allowed to play video games until... 10 a.m. So it didn't matter how early you got up, but 10 a.m. my mom would kick us outside mm -hmm. and we'd have to go play with the neighbors and a lot of stuff. Uh, so I learned to get up early. You know, you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you pour a big bowl of Captain Crunch or something, you go downstairs. At the time it was uh, Atari 2600 and then I moved eventually into uh, TurboGrafx-16. <laughs> and uh, Imagine my horror one time where I had like this real smooth like uh, operation going, you know, get to bed a little early on Friday, wake up, make my big bowl, and as I turn to go down the landing, the light's already on downstairs. I didn't turn that light on. I hear some clicking on a controller downstairs. My scum brother, God ah. oh. <laughs> beat me to it, and is you just see this kid, you know, wrapped up in his blanket that he pulled off his bed and everything, mm -hmm. just clicking away. And of course, all the games back there were like one player and all that stuff. So I'm just angrily stewing, eating my the way cereal. you turned. <laughs> that, <laughs> was, that was the earliest form of competitive gaming. <laughs> <laughs> you compete Brother, to actually play the game. Simply, simply yeah. game. Growing up, what was uh, retro gaming to uh, you? Yeah, well, retro gaming, I started with a Sega Genesis. Nice. Um, and from there, was a pure Sega fanboy. <laughs> right from Genesis to Saturn, Saturn to Dreamcast, and then finally leaving the line whenever Xbox came out. Oh, uh, so I'm making full that duration. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And it was almost as if you took the mass of all those old systems and just like compacted it into one. That original Xbox was hefty. Yes. You yeah. dropped that on your foot or something, or, you know. It was <laughs> nowhere near as heavy as the original Xbox controller. But it was heavy. How would you describe, like, with, like, I mean, I always felt like I was just like holding. It was like holding a small bag of potatoes. I thought it was almost like holding a small butt. You know, it's just like a big old butt cheese. No, because a butt can feel good to hold. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. ever said, I like holding these potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless a uh, butt's a little extra lumpy or something. Which <laughs> they've been a pork butt. Right? A pork <laughs> butt. Yeah, sure enough. Sure enough. Maybe I just had butts on my mind from a young age. Who knows? <laughs> No comment. <laughs> uh, I think we're all guilty. I definitely <laughs> right? did. Uh, <laughs> I definitely did fantasy RPGs, okay. and I played the hell out of Warcraft One, Warcraft Two, nice. Warcraft Three, and then when World of Warcraft hit, I said oh, I can't do that. So yeah. did you did you dip a toe in? Like, did you actually do WoW for a little bit? No, I didn't, because I had okay. an extremely shoddy computer, and WoW was the next gen of graphics card upgrade I couldn't afford. Well, that was like one of the biggest things for me was, uh, uh, especially when games went online. It was the PC. The PC mm -hmm. was always not as good as your friends. Like, you know, we always, it seemed like collectively we always had, like, one that was a few iterations behind and stuff. You, I would, you know, mow in the summer and stuff and then get, like, I think it was a, someone can correct me on this, but I think it was a Voodoo, like, three effects graphics card. It was, like, the 3000 line back in the day. And I, you know, put that into my PC and then the game was online and I realized, oh, yeah, my next problem is is my internet connection sucks. Uh, yeah. So I begged and pleaded my parents uh, at our at their current house years ago when uh, Comcast had, uh, I think it was cable internet, was when it first came out. Mm -hmm. And I remember just like Christmas, you know, just like, you know, the, the internet it's guy coming down the lane, putting it on, and I was like, oh yeah, and 
then the ultimate discovery with the good PC, the great connection, I was terrible at all my games, so that did not help. So I had a 14.4K modem until I graduated college. Boy. So I did, the online gaming I did yeah. was 1v1 Duke Nukem 3D. Oh, is that when you would dial into someone else's yes, computer and you make a direct uh, connection? Did you ever do that? I didn't know it was a thing. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they had, uh, oh man, what was it called? Like Heat.net or something? That it was, was uh, Heat.net, but it was using, I think, the IPX protocol, protocol back then. Or yeah, so you could dial like into this massive you know, 32, 64 players a match thing and yeah. chaos. Or if you were me living in a farmland <laughs> with a wordy more table. In the country. <laughs> you call your friend who also lives in the farmland. Uh, you know, you play that for an hour and your mom starts yelling at you to so get off the line because nobody can make phone calls while you're doing uh, this. It was fantastic. <laughs> that was in my uh, grandma's yeah, yeah. farmhouse uh, over in Laytonsville uh, while the, my parents were building their current house. Uh, we were at grandma's house. I think it was maybe 14, maybe 28K sometimes. And I remember this game called... Uh, I played two. It was Star Siege Tribes. Oh, yeah, that's good. That one. game was great. Uh, that was online and latency. I learned that about that real fast, that and ping. And then uh, uh, Counter Strike, the original like Counter Strike. Also where, good, like, yeah. Yeah, good and all that stuff. I remember hating skyscrapers because like you would just be like barely able to look around because of like the terrible ping, and then just someone would just die like from another <laughs> skyscraper, and you're like. Well, I deserve that. <laughs> My buddy uh, got the Xbox before me, and they came out with Counter Strike for Xbox. Oh my! And that's not a 100% great port, but we were so excited with our little farmhouse connection that we could sit there and play Counter Strike. Dude, it was against bots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> were they uh, the dumb bots or like the original bots, oh, the ones yeah. that were just walking lines and yeah. pumping walls half the time? Yeah. Stuff? yeah, yeah, yeah. They could take shots at you, but it was oh. right home of that. Oh, so I feel like in some games, especially like Star Siege Tribes, like the uh, the beginner AI, we did like the demo levels. Like I had problems with those guys, and then I eventually got good with them. And then I went online. I was like. Oh, I cut my teeth. Like I, I kind of figured this out. Like I could, and I'm just getting slaughtered by people because they had this concept of uh, what was it, ski jumping? I guess over yeah, the hills. Yeah, yeah. So you had to. I don't know if you ever saw it or not, but uh, uh, you, it was it was sci-fi, pure sci-fi, and it kind of had like a Warhammer kind of vibe to it. I guess you know with like the different empires, uh, Blood Eagles, and a, a bunch of others. Yeah, but they, of factions. You had laser guns and jetpacks, and that's it. <laughs> and you do capture the flag, like try to go get a base or something like that. And they had these hills, and their concept of physics was you would go sailing down these hills and uh, try to hit your jet at the right time just to gain crazy speed. So if you're doing capture the flag, you would try to hit it in a loop. So you would propel yourself off a hill, capture their flag, go flying way past it, scoot around the <laughs> edge of the level, and then come back and try to do it. Like, I never could figure that out. So I was always the idiot moping along in the hills and stuff. The <laughs> so. most recent analog to that was uh, that I've played was yeah. Planet Side. Oh my god, I've never played Side. Yeah. Did you ever touch that? No, I never did. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a whole class returning invisible, yeah. the uh, the spy, and uh, there was just these. So what was it? It was like computer generated levels. Yeah, no, it was in computer generated yeah. space. I played Planet Side too. Oh, I played Planet Side. I think one. it was three factions on a map at the same time. Mm. And just constant non-stop first-person shooter, yeah. trying to take capture points to take over the entire map for your faction. Okay. And the battles would not be like 15 minutes; they'd be like they were in 15 right? days. Yeah, 15 <laughs> days. If someone That's walked so out, or <laughs> you lost. it was just Jeez. it was attrition, right? Like it was whoever could put more we're people to the deep matter. Like, I mean, Jeez. like back when I think we all can kind of relate to this. Like probably before uh, wives. You know, yeah. before families and all that stuff, you know, we had a lot of free time in college and around that time, so... Yeah, I think it's not amazing that uh, we played things like World of Warcraft or Planet Side or Star Siege or whatever. I think the amazing thing is that we took a break long enough to actually get girlfriends. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we spent all my wow years single. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, it was kind of like escaping the clinic after a while, where you felt like, uh, in my personal play experience, uh, I played EverQuest. Oh, yeah. Before I got into WoW, and I didn't really like jump headlong into WoW, but like for me in high school, uh, EverQuest was all the rage. And I remember in a Spanish class that I was probably already failing, uh, a guy is like just kind of not paying attention like me, and he has this book out and it's describing uh, 
what that game was, EverQuest. And I was like, what is it? He, uh, people that might remember it is this uh, very distinctive, uh, like, uh, female sorcerer on the front. And just, like, the whole thing in the background is, like, endless freaking adventures. Like, why not? So installed it, played with a few friends online, and quickly, you know, got into that, uh, that what was Sucked that? into a world. Yeah. <laughs> you know that, uh, is this concept where, uh, I don't know if you guys have done it, but I'm sure you have, where you, you, you have friends that are saying, hey, come over. And mm -hmm. you're like, five more minutes. Ten more minutes. Uh -huh. I'll be over there a little bit. Before you know it, it's been three hours past, you originally say you're going to go over there, and you're like, I ain't shower. I'll probably stay home. <laughs> like, kind of thing. You this game's about to respawn. You didn't have friends. You had dudes that were saying, I feel bad for Ryan. Should we invite yeah. him? <laughs> Dude, I don't think he's well. Like, he has to see the sun. I'm looking through the blinds. And, you know? <laughs> so I still have friends who do play World of Warcraft, though. Oh, yeah. 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 That's and, why. And yeah. It seems like after all the patching and upgrades and completely reworking systems. Now they've gone back and they've released World of Warcraft Classic, Classic. <laughs> yep. which is the most brilliant scheme for just re-releasing your mm -hmm. original game I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. Captures all you retro nerds, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. And they have it within their power to just say, here's the full suite. And they're like, now, now, we're going to wait a year and then we'll release the expansion the classic. classic. <laughs> well, I remember when he was talking about this, I originally thought he was talking about Diablo 2, because that's about to be remade right? as well. Yeah. But it's the same kind of concept, right? Where it's like, you release it, you build like this community, this fervor, there's so much trust between, I guess like the good old days when like uh, a, ga a company like Blizzard like really spoke to their fans, they made, they were known for quality products and stuff, and then years go by, patches, and they release other versions that don't quite hit the mark and stuff, and uh, then they're like, oh, what if we just update the graphics and just throw the original game back out there, the second game, the sequel, and just get that money all over again? Yeah. Genius. Now, that marketing strategy is so strong. Too, it's so like, strong. I was active in, until like 2014, 2015. And I've had <laughs> endless people try to recruit me into WoW Classic or yep. Diablo 2 yep, re yep, redo. Yep. Do you have like crazy. a, is it like a, you just have this hard no? Like yeah, you just I, at this point I do, you. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be a little bit tempted for Overwatch 2. It's by the same creators of WoW. And, oh, when's that coming out? I don't even know, except I'm, I'm trying to distance myself, so I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to stay. But it, it's a co-op. Overwatch uh, 1 was all competitive, and Overwatch 2 is co-op, and I'm like, co-op games are This is at. the opposite of intervention. It's the, uh, we're helping you relapse into gaming. That's the oh, whole point yeah. of this uh, yeah. podcast. I think I'm good. I think, <laughs> I think I've seen that. No, no, no. Addictions are awesome. No, <laughs> I mean, I'd cast shade on the whole rework remaster thing, yeah. but as soon as the Sega Genesis collection came out for Xbox 360, oh, I went out day of and bought the Sega Genesis yeah, collection. Yeah. And there's something about like those collections where you can games you didn't even know back in the day, like you know, uh, just these really wild concepts. Like he and I play all the time, and he's like, "You gotta try out this game." I'm like, "What is it? It's a a lizard, okay." A lizard in a city on a skateboard. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. He goes, it's the 90s. It doesn't have to. <laughs> you know, but this sold a bunch of uh, copies, a bunch of units and everything, and now we're going to try it. And I don't know about you all, but like, what I enjoy about uh, uh, gaming, especially back then, because it's set, it's done, you know, you don't have to pay a subscription the game for it. Right. It's finite. It's, it's set. Um, the challenge is there. And it reminds me of how terrible I've become at gaming since my younger <laughs> self. You know, it's an echo of the yeah. past. Cause hey, I'm going to push back on that. You say, you, th you think this system exists now. You think this is a new thing. Oh, Blockbuster oh. video, man. Because oh. they oh, do those crystals. Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games that were just so freaking hard to beat, yeah. had no save state, and the entire point was that you'd rent that twice in Blockbuster. <laughs> Yeah. And it was, uh, you get on a Friday, it had to be there by, what was it, like noon on a Sunday, otherwise late fees and all that stuff. What I remember was before, uh, at the Blockbuster, before we, uh, I guess it was like uh, around uh, Christmas or something, and my parents were like, all right, you know, it's been a long time, so like, do you guys want a system? Like, do you guys, you and your brother want to like, just get a group gift? We're like, yeah, sure. Blockbuster rented consoles. So we rented the Sega Saturn, the PlayStation, and the Xbox, and ultimately went with the PlayStation because the PlayStation had Twisted Metal. Oh. And that was such a great game. And <laughs> man, we, when I go back and think about it, we had quite a few systems and all that stuff. Love you, Mom. Love you, Dad. <laughs> that is, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Car Combat had a moment. Dude, it was great. Lots uh, of Twisted Metals, Rogue Vigilante 8. Vigilante uh, 8. That was back in the day. Uh, that was 
weird game. It was a lot of farm villages and stuff like that that you were just rolling right. through pastures. And it was like 70s style. Game. It was 70s style. It definitely was like a disco vibe and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it definitely like, I don't know, made me uh, appreciate that time. Going back to a point you made earlier, I put it in my head to uh, bring it back up. Couch co-op. It's literally the best thing. That's what I'm all about now in my gaming. So uh, what? give us some examples. Like, What's Couch Co-op for you these days? So, growing up, I was definitely a Sega guy. Um, yeah. Just because that's what my family yes. happened to have. Console Wars! And so my One first point. Couch yeah, Co-op game <laughs> was Sonic 2. You know? uh, and I was the younger cousin playing with my older cousin, and I was Tails, which sucked. But I didn't know any better, so I just like... You know, double long, and when I got too slow, I got helicoptered back in because that's what happened. The, uh, Love that game. Though. Uh, the, the tails coming back. The in fact that I feel game. like I could participate at all in my cousin's yeah. game was awesome to me. It's yeah. like I'm helping, right? <laughs> and so then later that that translated to like we, we were really big on Battletoads, Double Dragons. It's not quite as hard as the original Battletoads, right. and then but it was still like a. Streets of Rage style, oh, side scrolling, beat them up. Beat up. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually could make progress in that. So I just remember like being super stoked and high fiving my cousin when we read a new level. And that's what I was like, this is what it's about, right? So that's what sucked me into World of Warcraft and the co op thing. Uh, that's not a couch co op, though. That's like an online co op. Right. And now that I've gotten out of that, I'm reinvigorating the couch co op for the social aspect. Yeah. I'll invite my best friends over and be like, hey, I got this game. Seems awesome. Let's uh, play a split screen, and that's become kind of like a niche audience in today's video gaming market because so many people play online, online. or they play single player, and yeah. that's it. Especially with COVID, it's such a rare thing to be able to invite somebody over, right. like, hey, let's play a video game together. Because you gotta kind of be like, and it's an awkward kind of conversation sometimes. We're like, hey, man, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, and well, some people are you know. right. So whenever I get the opportunity to do that now, it's like. Such a fun way to spend the evening, way, you know. Yeah. Drink some awesome beers and, and share an adventure together. I've been making virtual couches, so you have these couch co-op games. are seeing a resurgence on Steam for whatever reason. Uh, no online play, all local on one PC. Yeah. But now Steam has this concept of remote play together, there you go. and so you can get people who don't have copies of a game to play like an old school arcade beat 'em up, just by screen sharing with them, and then they're all. In putting them out there, like we recent we recently did uh, Dungeons and Dragons Tower of Doom, which yeah, was a Capcom nice. arcade beat 'em up, and we're just you know playing online like no thing. That sounds like a blast. One guy, uh, Mike in this case, buys the game and then uh, invites us to play. And when Steam's uh, cooperating, if it doesn't sabotage right. uh, uh, the experience, because it happened one time we were recording uh, before a session, we got even an old friend of ours that uh, we didn't think we'd hear from again or anything, you know, and. Uh, he shows up an hour later, <laughs> but you know that's a small <laughs> bit of detail. But the game, uh, we tried getting this going, try getting this going, try getting. Remember what game was that? It was. Uh, it was going to be Tower of Doom. It was going to be Tower of Doom, yeah. but they, they we yeah. d dove into the community boards, and they were like, "Oh yeah, they just released an update. It broke everything. Another night." Yeah, if if you have back. a Mac, you can't play. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was our really friend had a Mac. It disqualified <laughs> right there. But I, I agree. Like uh, uh, having the. Uh, you know, being disconnected from the internet because I feel like it's uh, the internet was so important during COVID times because you know we had to keep a lot of distance and all that stuff. But now as we're kind of creeping back out of our homes a little bit, little by little, it's so nice to just have someone that you haven't seen in a while come sure. on over. Like yeah. you were saying, let's get beer, let's get pizza, let's just sit down and enjoy a game. You know, just for the sake of like brevity. You know, just for the sake of being right. lighthearted about things. You know, because. Last year's been kind of crappy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we pour ourselves into a game for an escape, you know, and I guess comfort that falls with it. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, new games that we have on your mind, like, do you uh, have any besides, like you said, like Overwatch 2 earlier, uh, would there be any other games you're kind of eyeballing for? Uh, so it was an absolutely fantastic new game. Me and my wife just started playing it. My wife is not a gamer at all. Okay. Like, no way. All right. Uh, it's called It Takes Two. Um, it's by a developer that is known for building co-op games from the ground up. His previous title is called A Way Out, um, which is like a jailbreak storyline. Yeah. Okay. And, and um, you do a lot of quick time events, and it's it's very story driven. Yeah. Um, I think the guy used to be in cinema, and okay. he's translated into video games because he wants to tell his stories that way instead. So this game, It Takes Two, is about uh, a, a husband and a wife couple that are getting divorced. And it starts in the 
the viewpoint of the daughter who who gets sad and cries on her dolls and the dolls transform into the husband and wife and now you're shrunk down to hunter truck with kids miniature level and you're the husband and wife manifested in these dolls and you have some like grasshopper sensei guy in the form of a love book they're like you're gonna fix your relationship buddy and so you, now you need to do this puzzle platforming through a bunch of different ways that tells a story and is a really unique gaming experience to fix your relationship and beat the bosses and oh, that's so go awesome. through multiple game modes. And I will tell you, my wife's not a gamer at all, and she's absolutely loving this. I, I can't it. tell if this sounds uplifting or depressing. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that, that's uplifting. modern gaming, right? Yeah. Uplifting and depressing it, at the same it, time. It gives and takes a little bit at the same time, you know, but... Uh, I, I don't no comment on the story yet. We were only a couple levels in, but nope, man, the experience itself has been fantastic. Awesome. I mean, She's I all to... about it, and I'm all about it. I'm just giddy with excitement every time we play. My wife is curious about gaming. Where uh, what was that game? Uh, the Lord of the Rings game uh, where you were uh, uh, you had the blade and you were kind of doing questing, but they had the nemesis system. Oh, okay. Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor. So I was stuck uh, on a, a part of the game where I just could not figure out how to do it, and. Uh, Jessie, my wife, uh, just kind of goes over and I kind of show her how to play and everything. And she's like, oh, did you try this? And she unlocks a puzzle that got me further through the game. And I was like, cool. Sure. Yeah. Yep. There's another game, uh, I think it was that Blizzard game. It was that uh, card trading game. It was kind of like Magic the Gathering. But, uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Yeah. Hearthstone. Could not beat one of the uh, bosses. Jessie sits down, maybe spends like two rounds on or something like that. I think she should be on this podcast. Instead of me, this interbrew and everything, you know. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys play any co-op? Uh, in general, no. Uh. She, it, like, her interest is, like, if she's watching, she likes a story. She likes a story. Like, uh, one of my favorite game series growing up was uh, Uncharted. Uh, Nathan Drake and all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. it reminds me of my favorite trilogy, which was uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, absolutely love. He all was an absolutely time. terrible professor. Yeah, <laughs> but he was very productive. He was very productive. Can, if you need something got, he'd get got. Got your artifacts. Yeah, here you go get your artifacts. Uh, and also kind of questionable with uh, the whole students always being in love with them. That's a gray area, you know. I guess it was college. Who knows? Anyway, tangent. But Uncharted was always amazing to me because it kind of relived those moments of, like, you know, you were just this adventurer. And it was one of the first times, I guess, before, or maybe just... Uh, since like Tomb Raider, where like just like this adventuring world was opened up, and you were like, "Wow, games can do this!" Like this is one of those like defining moments, you know. And I remember uh, Uncharted just like laying out like these just beautiful levels. And every iteration that I played, Jesse would actually come downstairs and watch me. You know, she'd be reading a book, but I'd catch her like look over my shoulder, and she'd be peeking behind the pages every once in a while, like keep playing like what's Nathan gonna do next what's he gonna do next kind of thing I'm like oh he's gonna die in most cases because I always play on hard he's gonna keep missing yeah. that guy over there <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I've never played the Uncharted games but it seems yeah. like one of those awesome games that are really fun to watch because the, the sense of adventure is just so yeah, huge yeah. Yeah. It, it's like if uh, uh, the Da Vinci Code was a, a, a video game I guess you know just like unreal like completely out of left field twist after twist after twist but you're in control of it, and it's so forgiving. Like what I like about it is, you can die in a spectacular fashion, and the game resets you like ten seconds, and you're like, oh okay, like <laughs> there's really no. So like I I play on hard difficulty because in those games at least, it's really just getting through the challenge of getting through that bit, you know, and you just kind of figure out how to work it or anything. I don't know if it made me a better gamer or not, but I beat him on hard. <laughs> That's pretty good. Man. Hard mode. Yeah, like, does your wife ever watch you play games, or does uh, she no, play herself? She'll play with me. She won't watch me play. Oh, okay. And our go-to co-op game is Earth, Force, Earth Defense Force 2017. Or, Which one? Or was yeah. the last one, 2025. We've played a couple oh. in the series. Okay. It's a B-movie style alien defense game where you're right. a little soldier on the ground, and level one, all these ants that are huge just start burrowing out of the ground and destroying the city, so you yeah, gotta shoot all the ants. And then it turns out into spiders busting out of the ground and jumping everywhere and shooting giant webs. And then the UFOs arrive and start dropping the ants and spiders. <laughs> and then giant robots show up. And every level as you're killing things, you can grab more and more weapon upgrades. So you start just with a little machine gun, blah, 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 blah. But then you move on to, like, you've got a bazooka or a grenade launcher that shoots, like, 50 grenades that are all second-time trigger that you blow. Or you're throwing down turrets 
or launching a grenade that nukes the entire city. Oh man! Orbital yeah. space beam cannons. Just to lay waste <laughs> to everything. You it, know, yeah. It is absolute 100% camp, and <laughs> it is a lot of fun. I mean, like, sounds like it. Yeah, it has a it has a theme, it has a motif, and it just really leans into it, and that can speak to you. you yeah, know? there's like 150 levels in the thing too. Like they just do every level is one degree a little more wacky. They never go full wacky on a level. When you say <laughs> that, that makes me get like cold sweat because uh, <laughs> I think in my days of playing uh, Rampage World Tour, the original one on the Nintendo. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where you were uh, oh like the the, the, the calm, gorilla, the, gorilla the lizard, the lizard, and, and then there's one wolf. of what is the, the wolf? wolf. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it was, for those not aware, it's just three giant monsters destroying a city at a time, doing a war war. You got, tour like, you got a health pack for eating pedestrians, right? Eating pedestrians <laughs> yeah. and stuff. So the concept was amazing where you and your friend uh, would like uh, be almost competitive in trying to scale these buildings and strategically punch out the walls, grab like uh, combos and stuff, combos and, stuff <laughs> and jump between really them before scared. they would collapse. And so of course... Good. There's like military guys and other stuff. If you haven't played it, go back and play the original Nintendo. It was so, uh, so much fun. <laughs> but we would play that game, 150 levels. You play that game. I remember one night, back when I could stay up all night, uh, we were just like, yeah, hey, we're going to play. And I think we did like 50 levels. And it went well into the early morning hours and stuff. And I was like, I don't think I can see this game anymore. <laughs> Cold turkey. And when you beat Earth Defense Force on normal mode, then you have to get to hard and do it all over again. And the weapon upgrades increase. Oh my god, it's, it scales. There's so many things to pick up and play around with in that game. Everything scales. That's awesome. What games like that. Yeah. I think we wasted enough time today. Thanks for uh, cool. spending it with us. Yeah, yeah of course. appreciate it. All right, well, this is Ryan, Good talk. Mike, Mike, and James. James. Thanks for doing the interbrew. See you next time.